Wondering what hell looks like? Venus might give you a hint. With a surface temperature reaching as high as 905 degrees Fahrenheit, 485 degrees Celsius, this planet is a scorching inferno. The catalyst? Over a thousand volcanoes infest its surface, ejecting hot sulfuric acid clouds. One touch on Venus's surface, and you'll be burned alive. The temperature is not your only nightmare on this hellish planet. Its immense barometric pressure is almost similar to being 1,500 meters underwater. Humans certainly won't last long on Venus. Even rovers and landers are no match for the conditions on Venus. They only last for minutes. Information about this infernal planet was rare, not until the Soviets captured declassified photos of Venus. What have they found on Venus? Have they found any traces of life? What mysteries have the Soviets concealed for decades? Let's explore. The Venera missions. The Venera, or Venus in Russian, was an exceptional space program even by today's exploration standards. Its main achievement? Unraveling never-before-seen photos of Venus despite its cruel conditions. How did the Soviets manage to land and capture a photo on Venus? With the technology back then, how did they make it possible? In the early 1960s, the space war between the United States and the Soviet Union was in full gear. Each of these gigantic nations was eager to claim as many firsts as they could. One massive advantage the Soviets had, however, was that they could carry heavier loads than the US, making it possible for them to construct bigger manned and unmanned spacecraft, enabling them to launch missions to the grueling inner planets using four-stage rockets and state-of-the-art telemetry systems. One of them was the horrendous surface of Venus with their Venera missions. Venera 1, which was the first attempt by the Soviets to reach Venus, weighed a staggering 1,400 pounds, 643.5 kilograms, making the first ever satellite, Sputnik 1, look like a small balloon at 184 pounds, 83.6 kilograms. The Soviets, however, suffered a terrible setback when the initial Venera 1 probe was not able to leave Earth's orbit. Venera 2 was more progressive, doing a successful flyby on Venus, but it came up a little short as it failed to transmit any data from the historical encounter. Following the two unsuccessful attempts, the Soviets were determined to land on the hellish planet. The next four missions were dedicated to landing a probe on Venus, attaching these probes to a monumental detachable pod known as a descent module. It was also equipped with instruments that were vital to understanding Venus's true nature. Venera 3 was a huge milestone for the Soviets, though it was not completely successful. Venera 3 slammed into Venus's surface instead of making a soft landing. It did make it into the history books, though, as the first probe to land on another planet. The Soviets' success on Venus continued with Venera 4, 5, and 6. In 1967, Venera 4 became the first ever probe to successfully return data from the inside of the Venusian atmosphere. Venera 5 and 6, on the other hand, descended on a parachute through the Venusian atmosphere. Each operated for about 50 minutes before they were crushed by Venus's intense atmospheric pressure. On December 15, 1970, the Soviets did the unthinkable with Venera 7. As it became the first spacecraft to soft land on another planet and the first to send back data from the surface. What did it uncover? A surface hotter than a brick pizza oven. Venera 7 paved the way for future triumphant missions on Venus. The successor, Venera 8, once again exceeded expectations as the probe operated for a full 50 minutes, confirming every piece of data that was sent by Venera 7. But the world was not aware of what the Soviets would achieve in the next Venera missions, a revolutionary and secret milestone that NASA recently discovered. Venus's shocking past. What if I told you that Venus might have hosted life billions of years ago? Yes, you heard that right. This scorching hot planet might have been a little gentler in its earlier stages. In past studies about Venus, it has been found that the planet may have once had shallow oceans on its surface, and it may have transitioned from an Earth-like planet to the hot, hellish place it is today. Under stable climate conditions, Venus would have been able to support liquid water, and, in turn, possibly allow life to emerge. In fact, scientists suggest that temperatures on Venus billions of years ago might range from a low of 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, to a high of 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius.
However, a near global resurfacing event happened that changed the once mild planet into a big molten planet floating in space. The catastrophic resurfacing on Venus occurred through infrequent planet-wide volcanic events that caused a release or outgassing of carbon dioxide stored in the rocks of the planet. As a result, Venus's atmosphere became too dense and hot for life to survive. Scientists fear that the cataclysmic climate of Venus today might be a hint of what's to come for our planet in the near future. Astronomers were eager to study every bit of Venus, and it is safe to say that the Soviets became pioneers with their Venera program. The Soviets secretly hid vital information they gathered from Venus for decades, and recently, NASA declassified the only photographs we have of the surface of Venus. Venera's Declassified Photos of Venus In the midst of an intensifying space race, the Soviets have overtaken the U.S. in exploring Venus, and they are about to hit the finish line. After the historical Venera 8, morale at the Soviet Space Agency was high. They were optimistic that they could take a full swing on Venus, and so they tried by capturing highly classified photos of Venus, the only photos of that planet. On October 20, 1975, history was made. Venera 9 became the first lander to take photos on the surface of another planet. The 11,000-pound Venera 9-12 to missions were the most remarkable of all the Soviet missions to Venus. These landers have cameras that could capture the surface of Venus directly, and what they captured was one of the most complicated and hellish surfaces that the Soviets have successfully landed a robot. The surfaces reach up to 905 degrees Fahrenheit or 485 degrees Celsius. That's twice the melting point of tin. Typical radio circuits would melt in an instant, and papers would catch fire in the blink of an eye. To add to the inhospitable circumstances on Venus, the probe also measured an atmospheric pressure of over 900 times greater than here on Earth. The photos were recently revealed by NASA, and it shows shocking realities about the surface of Venus. The initial pictures taken by Venera 9 and 10 are quite disturbing, as they depict a dry and stony extraterrestrial landscape that extends beyond sight, appearing sharp, clear, and distorted due to the wide-angle lenses used. Nevertheless, the images also exhibit the boundaries of the landers, which expose their distinct Soviet style. Potassium, thorium, and potassium concentrates were found on the Venusian surface. These elements were also measured by Venera 8 during its 50-minute mission on the planet. These elements are trace elements on Earth, which means they are found in bezels like those in Hawaii, or mid-ocean ridges and in small amounts. With the Soviets capturing the first-ever photos of Venus, they took it to the next level with the twin Venera 13 and 14, which landed on Venus in 1982. Venera 13 and 14 were much more sophisticated than the previous landers. The cameras were capable of capturing colored images of Venus, and they were equipped with a microphone that recorded the sound of Venusian winds. Venera 13 and 14 captured a total of four photos of Venus, with each of them revealing a dry and rocky landscape with a deep, striking yellowish color. Curious why the images are so yellow? That's because Venus has a thick, toxic atmosphere filled with carbon dioxide, and it's perpetually shrouded in thick, yellowish clouds of sulfuric acid that trap heat, causing a runaway greenhouse effect. These images and data gathered by Venera suggest that Venus was not always as barren as it is today, and that the planet may have hosted water and even life before it was smothered by this hellish flog of greenhouse gases. These are our only images of the surface of Venus, and these images may be a chilling warning for us humans as they may shed light on one of Earth's possible futures.